When you think of a typical October Pokemon run, things that come to mind are spooky ghost, maybe a brooding dark type, but sometimes a run can be scary by just how bad it is and coughing is here to deliver up some blood curdling horror up on a silver platter. Now you guys know the drill by now, coughing, Pokemon Red, how fast can we get through the game and where is it going to end up on the tier list, but the very first thing I have to call attention to is this tutorial battle. I'm gonna get a turn one crit with tackle and it still takes me five turns to get past a squirtle and I think that says a lot more than I could put into words to prepare you for what's to come. And guys, I have a confession to make. This Pokemon has given me fits. I put this run off for months and I originally wanted to do this run before I even had a baby, but here we are. My baby's about to be six months old, but finally I have fully committed. This is also the very first Pokemon run where I recorded a lot of audio and I completely scrapped it in favor of redoing it completely. You guys know I don't really use a script anymore and what ended up happening was like just up to the Lieutenant Surge split, I was like at 45 minutes of me just yapping about coughing and I refused to spend like an hour just to tell you a Pokemon is bad because spoiler alert, it's just not that good. So to kind of psychologically deep dive into what makes this little Pokemon an absolute chore to play, let's start with the typing. Mono Poison just isn't very good. I could sit here all day and just yap and we can get specific on what makes it bad, but all you really need to know is that we're weak to Psychic and we all know there's a handful of late game Alakazams ready to stalk us like Jason Voorhees and coughing is just that pretty little 18 year old camp counselor. So to remedy this problem, you would either want to maybe hit back really hard or maybe be able to soak up damage well, but just look at the stats. 40 base HP, 35 base speed, 65 base attack. That's pretty much the opposite of everything that you would want to do. And if I can give coughing any praise at all, I would say 95 defense. It's pretty good. Even if defense isn't a great solo run stat, we, we got it, I guess. And I'm going to skip straight to the TMs here and we're just going to soak all this in. To me, it feels almost like someone at Game Freak took pity on coughing. They just gave it the most basic moves like Rage, Toxic, Double Team, Bide. And at the end, they just tacked on Thunderbolt and Fire Blast just so it wouldn't be the worst Pokemon ever. But I'm not complaining. It could be worse. What I want to focus on here is the level up set. Just like Tauros, we'll be relying on Tackle for a huge chunk of the game. And if it held back Tauros, like a pretty good Pokemon for being truly great, imagine what it's going to do to this little ball of gas. Everything else, not really that great either. Level 37 for Smokescreen, a little bit too late for me. I think Haze is pretty worthless, and you can't even use moves like Self Destruct or Explosion in a solo playthrough. I'm not gonna talk about Sludge yet. It's actually pretty good, we'll talk about it later, but I wanna go look at Smog here. I wanna talk about Smog a lot because it is the single most infuriating move I've ever used so far, but let's just hold off just for a second. Now the early game is actually pretty simple and through the magic of video editing we don't have to sit through every single second of it but I will call myself out on something that I think could be a little bit faster. I fight the second optional bug catcher and it takes forever. The Kakuna and Harden specifically makes me think that maybe grinding wild battles would be better here and you'll see why I'm not eager to jump back in to redo this and play even more coughing as we progress. Now after that it's pretty straightforward. We fight the mandatory bug catcher and now it's onto some light years blackout grinding. Now for whatever reason and you've never seen a video, I'll touch on it. Trainer Pokemon give 50% more experience. This level 11 Diglett on the junior trainer's team, he gives roughly the same experience as fighting like six low level Weedles, and it's just vastly more efficient to take it out, then let the Sandshrew defeat you, then rinse and repeat. Now coughing isn't great, but since smog is so bad, you can actually do this for quite a while, and I end up doing this to about level 15, and at this point, you'd need to be incredibly unlucky to keep blacking out, and even though we get to 15 here, and we're at about 35 minutes of in-game time. We aren't even halfway through the Brock split, if you can believe that. There's a method that a commenter named Chris brought up multiple times in the past. Basically, if you have a run like this that has to grind wild battles anyway, you can just grind wild battles until you hit struggle strats, deplete all your PP, lose a little bit of HP, then you can black out some more. But I did test the method, and I found once you start one-shotting the low-level Pokemon, it's not really worth the extra overworld movement. And you just kind of get more per-turn experience this way, but I do appreciate the suggestion a lot. To cut a long story short here, I need to get to about level 19. 
Originally, I was going to about 220 experience until 19 so that the Geodude would level me up. And 19 is that magical number where you will outspeed the Onyx, which goes a really long way into at least making this battle somewhat consistent. But after multiple playthroughs, I went a little bit further to push me ahead on a few experience breakpoints. Now, all that really goes out the window here because I fought a Kakuna and it gets me to like within 20 experience of 19. So I figured I'll just go ahead and finish off the level. But finally, we're level 19 and we can talk about Brock. There are two overarching points of RNG to talk about. Now, first is the Geodude as a whole. How much HP will you have left before moving on? Now, during this first attempt, you'll see that it's using Defense Curl at the right times. It's negating my damage. And at the end of the day, it just gets me lower than it normally would. I end up getting to 16 HP, and this makes this fight much harder than it actually should be. Second is Onyx, and I guess we can finally talk about Smog a little bit. It does have a 40% chance to poison, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. That's actually pretty good. What isn't good, there's two things. Number one, 20 base power. And the second thing puts this move on another level of bad. It has 70% accuracy. It's a terrible move. And for my money, I think it is the second worst move in the entire game behind only Constrict. And the fact that we have to rely on this move a few times early to even have a chance of shaving off some time and making coffee not the worst Pokemon ever, it just makes it that much more infuriating to use. So I'm going to have to have an early reset here because I'm just too low. I didn't hit enough smog poison chances, but it is what it is. Early reset. The next time the Geodude goes, how it usually goes, we got unlucky the first time. I have a lot more health here and overall I'm just in a better position. So basically this fight just boils down to if you can get six poison procs on the just because Brock has five full heals and if you can get there it becomes like a battle of attrition you can continue to use smog on the bad turns it hardly does any damage at all and then you use tackle the rest of the way but eventually I slowly chip through the battle and that means coughing has achieved the first badge When it comes to metrics, I don't really keep track of the worst of everything, but in this case, I do know what the worst Brock split is to date. Now this isn't counting Abra. Abra can beat the game, but it's Brock split is specifically, well, let's just say it's a special case, but Psyduck is the worst Brock split. It had a one hour, five minute Brock split and coughing just leaped over that by 13 minutes. So you already know the run is kind of dire already. And with no new moves in sight until we hit level 32 or beat Lieutenant Surge, it's gonna be more of the same for a bit but that means that we have to train even more so I start off by facing the four bug bug catcher on route three and when we get inside of Mount Moon I fight the fan favorite super nerd we're fighting the double grass last now I'm fighting the mega punch rocket grunt here so that I can get that sweet ether and when we wrap up Mount Moon I'm still a little bit away from level 23 to get there I'm gonna fight both of Misty's trainers we're gonna bail out and that's gonna take us to rival number two even if you're level 23, we still don't outspeed Pidgeotto, but the extra damage, it does actually help, but it still takes a while. Now, thankfully, Pidgeotto takes mercy on our soul. It's just going to go for straight damage, but you can see that we still get beat up here, but that's just kind of coughing in a nutshell, and this is pretty much as good as it gets at this point. Not really much else to say about the battle. We just make it through. We survive. After the battle, I'm going to go back and heal, and if you didn't know, out of the entire game, the biggest cluster, say it with me, cluster of mandatory battles, they're coming up right here on Nugget Bridge, guys, all the way up to Bill's house. Now, unfortunately, coughing has bad moves. There's no way we can get around it, and I'm not going to pretend that I can make this a good split. It's not great, but I do want to take just a second to ask if you're enjoying the video. Maybe go down, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. You guys were extremely extremely nice to me last time and I appreciate that a lot and I want to hit 20k it's something that would be kind of cool so I humbly ask you guys to help out in whatever way you can but with that said this section of the game is over we're pretty deep into level 25 right now and I'm gonna make the bold decision to take on Misty For this fight, the main thing you really want to go right is seeing a lot of tackle. And basically, you're at the full mercy of RNG here. Early smog poison can be pretty good as well. But I feel like when I was struggling with this run and I was trying to get some like inspiration to see if I can maybe improve the route or see if anybody broke this Pokemon, basically every place that I looked, they skipped over Misty. And I really, really, really wanted to get this out of the way because I didn't want to have to delay Thunderbolt any longer than I had to. Now, this fight doesn't go great. This was one of those 
situations where I knew that I could potentially reset a ton. And I do go down several times. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Now, Starmie in general, it loves to use Bubble Beam. It loves to crit. And it can just melt through coughing. And what you're going to see here is that I go down four times. Four additional resets. But eventually, I get the fight that I want. I end up seeing a ton of tackles. That's exactly what I needed. I get the poison early on Starmie. And it goes pretty smooth until I get Starmie down to just a sliver of health. Then it's going to go for Bubble Beam. And I kind of puckered up here because a crit would have ended my life. But coughing does hang on. And we knock out. Believe it or not, this is one of the hardest challenges in the run without having to backtrack. And I just, I can't understate this here. This was huge for the run. We've seen the learn set. We've seen the run to this point. It's been pretty poor. And if you have to delay the Lieutenant Surge fight on top of that by skipping Misty, it makes it that much worse. So I was pretty stubborn about getting this fight down now. But as you can probably guess, things are still not going to be smooth sailing just yet. Going down to Vermilion, there's a lot to do. There's like 11 extra battles. So I'm just going to kind of cover the extras here because there's, there's a good bit. In general, this is where I'm going to use all those ethers. There's like three total. I'm probably even going to use the elixir here to try to just keep a solid pace and more importantly, keep my cerulean dig point intact. But on route 11, I fight four trainers. There's a youngster that has a knit arena. There's two engineers. The second one has a magneton. It gives a ton of experience, if you will. And there's going to be another youngster that has eradicate. And then uh, finally, we're going to move on to the SSN. Here, I'm going to pick up the usual goodies, max potions, ethers, the TM for rest. And there's six total trainers here. Not really too interesting to look at. And finally, I'm going to finish up finding the puppy gentleman on the first floor before I grab that gentleman candy. And we're going to move on to rival number three. But just for this little part in general, 11 total extra battles. We kept it slow, we kept it steady, but we made it through just fine. Rival number three is surprisingly, it's not a free fight. Remember, we still only have Tackle and Smog, and thankfully we get past the Pidgeotto once again without a Sand Attack, and you think we would be golden from there, but it's a lot closer than you would think. Now, if you come into this fight at a lower level, maybe like level 27 or something like that, and you're not prepared, things like Sand Attack, the Raticate damage, the 50-50 chance for Kadabra to use Confusion, it can force resets. This fight can be pretty hard. And just to drive the point home here, I pretty much get everything I want out of this fight. It goes perfect, and I'm still in the yellow health at the end. And coughing, we can see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. We're almost at the promised land. Lieutenant Surge, not really an interesting fight for the reasons you would think. We have the same exact moves, not much commentary on that. And the only thing in general that's kind of sad is that Pikachu growls me, but it really doesn't matter because I have that meticulous planning. That means I'm going to hit level 32 going into the Raichu and finally it's time for Sludge. So even with the attack debuff, I can make it through really easy with a two shot. I can survive the Raichu's hits, two tap it. And you can already see just from this quick glimpse how much of a difference this move makes. And let's kind of talk about what that means for coughing. So first off, let me get this out of the way. There's no split data for the run. There's no graphic I could put up on the screen to tell you guys that this Pokemon means anything. It's not very good. There's no reason to look at it. And I don't think anyone's going to argue considering that we have a 2 hour, 22 minute, and 12 second surge split. The important thing here is that we have access to Thunderbolt. And like we just seen for a second, we also have Sludge. Now for me, this is the equivalent of going from Tackle to Hyper Beam in terms of poison moves. Not only does Sludge retain that same 40 percent poison chance but it has over triple the base power and get this it has 100 percent accuracy what was game freak thinking this move should have at least 60 percent accuracy in my opinion now with stab this move has 97 effective power and that's not that bad that's pretty good actually and the combination of thunderbolt and sludge it's going to make this run infinitely easier but i would like to break down something else real quick to kind of put what we've seen into perspective so if you break pokemon red down into its most simple form there's eight gems, three rocket sections. There's the final stretch of the game with rival number six, Victory Road, and the Elite Four. If you do the bare minimum, that's 68 battles since I actually do the rocket hideout. And up to this point, after the third gem badge, you've done around 27 of 68 battles in the game, which comes out to around 40% of the game. So with a split time of two hours and 22 minutes on Surge, even if we just pretended for a second that coughing has beat the entire game, we hoisted him over our shoulders and we said, yay, 
coughing, you did it. It would still only be like 14th or 15th place, which is kind of sad. So as we rapidly approach that two and a half hour mark, you might be surprised that I actually enjoyed this run from this point on. And I even saw like a lot of potential in coughing. That's why it took so long to make the video. Just because I saw a little, a glimpse of something in there. I did my best to get a solid run, but keep in mind that a solid run for coughing, it's still not gonna be really good, but I did try because I actually liked the run from this point on. Now keeping things on the sad side, uh, we need to cover Rock Tunnel. Pokemaniacs are one of the very few trainers that have good AI, and he has a team with two Pokemon with super effective damage. At this level, we can take Bone Clubs for days, and you're gonna need to do that because we only have resisted sludge to do damage here. Thunderbolt is a godsend as well because we can get rid of the Slowpoke without taking any confusion damage. And this was another reason why it's important to not skip Misty, because getting Thunderbolt and getting all these extra levels now, it makes this part not even really matter that much. And I also have to mention the Boomer Hacker. Like once again, we really don't have anything to deal with ground types. And this is gonna be one of the few little areas of the game where having high defense helps. Every time I hit record, I say defense, and I wanna say defense. I don't know why I do that. But basically here, I just kinda waste time and hope they use self-destruct early. It wasn't ever really a problem in testing, but here it almost takes me out. I live with just five HP, but I avoid any resets. That's the important part of the game. And before we finally move on, I do pick up this max ether outside of Rock Tunnel. It's usually something I don't have to pick up, but it does really help out coughing during a grinding session later. Now we've reached Celadon, and the one thing Poison is pretty good against is Grass, so Erica is the logical choice, but to keep things smooth, I'm gonna do some extra training. There are five pretty decent trainers in the gym, and even though I've kinda shied away from battling Erica's trainers in recent videos because they're not the most efficient battles ever, they are good enough for coughing to face, and that's gonna take us to Erica. The extra training, most of it was due to a good AI. It means that Victory Bell will only go for rap, and being level 36 gives me a speed tie, which dramatically increases my chances to actually get to move here. It goes perfect here. I move first, I hit really hard, it misses rap, and then I just take care of business. Now the rest of the fight's pretty much guaranteed. I toss some sludge onto these plants, and we're making some fast progress in contrast to how the first part of the game went. Next up is the Rocket Hideout, and just to like mention it, uh, I'm gonna be picking up three PP ups for later, and I've said this in the past, but I think if you allow every single Pokemon to skip the Rocket Hideout, you're just giving Pokemon like coughing a free pass from fighting pretty difficult challenges. There are gonna be several ground types kind of littered in here, but the extra training plus fighting Erica a little bit earlier, it allowed me to get to as high of a level as I could so that I didn't waste too much time in here. And it also goes without saying that what makes Giovanni a little bit tough is that ground tops in general aren't great but if you have rock ground combination it completely negates thunderbolt and it double resist poison and it leaves us in a position where we don't do hardly any damage thankfully onyx and rhyhorn they're not too big of threats so i can just slowly chew through them especially with the poison procs but if i had to call out another mistake that i made i think i should have taken smoke screen into the fight i could have just threw one or two on each pokemon and it would give me a pretty significant chance to avoid damage and fights like this wouldn't be hardly as close as they were you can see here i'm barely gonna survive at the end with just three health but like we've already seen several times a win is a win and i'm happy for it there's really not much to say about pokemon tower once again coughing's fairly competent but it's not like I'm one-shotting everything in sight. Now what's funny is that if the ghost Marowak decides to actually pick useful moves, you can be in trouble. There was one time in testing where I got like leered into double bone club and it's very rare that you would ever look at this battle for any kind of difficulty at all. So that was kind of cool. But moving along, next up I will be catching the Snorlax as my final HM user. And now we're gonna do another grind session and it's with Coughing's people, the bikers, because we all know that bikers love their dirty, grimy poison types in real life. I'm not sure what Game Freak was trying to say with this. There are going to be a total of seven bikers that I prefer to battle here. And they give a pretty nice little chunk of experience to gear coughing up for that late game push. And this is the part of the game where that max ether really helps. It allows me to use 30 total thunderbolts, which makes the battles go pretty quick. And after I'm done with the safari zone, I go do the shop buy for the run. And it's pretty straightforward. I get a Pokedaw for Mimic, about five calciums, two proteins. Now this, along with things like the three free carbos, 
the two free proteins. It's gonna pretty much max me out on stat experience, and now I can finally start to make some more progress. I'm gonna do Koga next, and he does have psychic trainers in this gym, but we have a pretty big level advantage now, so I can get through without too much hassle. I can make sure I heal up, and now we can talk about the gym battle. Now this is another spot where high defense, I said it right, helps out, but the poison topping can make things a little bit sketchy. Now the enemy coughings, they can go for either tackle or smoke screen due to good AI. And if your accuracy gets dropped and the muck starts to use minimize, it can get pretty annoying. Now the main thing for this fight is making sure that you're at full health and as you progress through the fight, be as healthy as you can possibly be because wheezing will only go for self-destruct. And if Koga decides to use like a couple of X attacks, there's nothing you can do, but we're gonna see here that he's gonna use one X attack, then use self-destruct and it nearly one shots us, but I barely hang on. And what's really important here, what's really helpful is that speed badge boost. And once again, coughing, making some pretty fast Fast progress. Next up, we're gonna temporarily dip into Silphco mainly to top off some vitamins, so that means that we're going straight to the 10th floor, we're gonna clear the path, and I fought some pretty efficient trainers here. Just like with the Vermilion section, I'm not gonna cover it all, I'll just tell you. I clear out the 9th floor, 8th floor, 5th floor, 3rd floor, and 2nd floor, so I do a pretty good bit of battles. At the end, I'm a little bit of the way through level 49, and now I'm gonna dig out, and now it's time to slow it down. Let's relax a little bit, let's take a little break. Of course, that means it's time for that brisk swim down to Cinnabar, and we're just gonna reflect on what we've been through so far. And inside of Pokemon Match, I'm gonna pick up the last Carbos to kind of cap off my speed. And when we get inside of Blaine's Gym, I'm gonna fight the first three chainers before I slow down a little bit and I ask myself if TM28 is actually Tombstoner, brother, or not. But don't think too hard because we got another gym battle coming right up. There's really not too much going on in this fight. I just use sludge, that's it. I don't really one-shot things. Blaine doesn't really do anything back. Now, for example, the Rapidash gets a turn one Blaine special super potion, then it misses Growl. And I'm able just to spam attacks until this one is over. Let's not really spend too much time covering it because I just, I win pretty easy. Now the big reward here is Fire Blast. This finally, near the end of the game, it gives me a semi-reliable answer to ground types. And just in general, having a 100 base power nuke in my back pocket nearly completes the moveset. And just to make sure I can spam it a little bit more, I'm gonna slap three PP ups on it. And now I can return to Sylph and we can finish off these major battles. Rival 5 doesn't really need a fancy intro this week because I just spent so much time preparing for later stuff that I'm just over leveled. And I'm basically just gonna one shot everything. The Alakazam doesn't pose too much of a threat even though Psybeam still does a solid amount of damage, but I can still one shot it. And I can almost clean sweep the entire fight, but Blastoise will hang on at the end. And with Fire Blast, Giovanni number two is not an issue, so let's finally talk about Sabrina. So starting this one out, I'm gonna do an immediate freeze frame and talk about some useless information that only matters when you do runs like this. It's really hard to plan out runs where you do wild grinding in the Brock section. They can just have wildly different results on your stat experience just due to how the random nature of wild encounters work. The plan here and usually what happened in practice was that I was at 91 speed right here after I perfectly leveled up after Giovanni number two. That would let me go first and that would eliminate Kadabra without any issue at all but you can see here that we're just speed tied. We both have 90 speed. And the problem with that in red version is that Kadabra is just as dangerous, if not more dangerous than Alakazam because it knows Psychic. Alakazam doesn't at this point. And I know I just talked a lot about all this, but I really wanted to point it out. But what ends up happening is I win the speed tie and I just one shot it. So it doesn't really matter. But I think if you were really worried from this point on, I guess you could mimic you could take light screen from Mr. Mom, but I just go straight damage. Sludge does the job on the first. Fire Blast takes care of Venomoth. And at the end, Alakazam will go first. It sets up Reflect, lets it survive the Sludge. And if you really want to, guys, I want you to pause the video. I want you to tell me how much damage you think this Psy Wave is gonna do to me. Now this Psy Wave is gonna do three whole damage to me. Owie, I got a scratch by the Alakazam, put a Band-Aid on it. If you guess that, you win. And now let's just continue. It's kind of like a straight line path to the end of the game now. 
that's going to take us straight into Giovanni. And what I was supposed to do is bait out two Leers or Tail Whips from the Rhyhorn, and that would give me extra speed and damage ranges because Gen 1 is such a cool game. I sort of just forget. There's a lot to remember for this run. I only do one, and it leads to this like awkward Doug Trio section. I need to mimic Dig, but since I don't outspeed, it takes a while to get things online, and I even take some really heavy, unnecessary damage as a result. But at this point, I'm already set up. I take Dig, and I can pretty much start to take out everything pretty easy. But I have to end up spending some extra turns because I don't have the two badge boost. But I still win. That's all that matters. Coughing has officially achieved the eight badges, and now we can move on. Now let's go straight into rival number six. And I feel like it's been forever since I talked about this, but there's a cheat code for weaker Pokemon, and that's using agility to offset your bad stats. On top of that, Pidgeot will only use agility against us, so we can just freely take it, we can freely set up, and that's gonna give us some really great ranges, and it's pretty much gonna be just like rival number five. I'm gonna basically one-shot everything, and this time with agility, Alakazam won't even have a chance to retaliate, and overall, this is a pretty strong showing for a Pokemon that feels like it came a long way since grinding Weedles on Brock. Now, at the end of the game, you might expect that coughing would need to train some more, but the toughest parts of the game are pretty much over. And if I don't want to be a bottom feeding, bottom three ranked Pokemon, I have to skip everything. I will pick up the rare candy, but we're going to skip all training, and we're about as ready as I can possibly be, so let's just dive into the Elite Four. Lorelai's first and Dugong is a Pokemon that will spam psychic moves. It'll give us a free pass. So just chip it down with whatever you want to do. It's going to use rest and we can just take it out with Thunderbolt. Cloyster is just a speed bump in the road. It has low HP. We can get through it. And once again, Slowbro will just spam Amnesia. We want to mimic it, use it twice. That sets us up to sweep. And I'm going to take it out with physical damage because it has like a million special right now. But at this point, the battle's over. I can fire blast the Jinx, Thunderbolt the Lapras, and we can move on to the next one already. Now for Bruno, I did take a little bit of time to figure out what was the lowest possible number of turns here. The difference is really marginal and it really doesn't matter, but if you mimic Harden on the first Onyx and then sweep, you can do a 16 total turn battle, whereas the best case scenario if you go straight damage is like 17 turns, but since you'll be using Fire Blast several times, you'll likely miss. So this way does save you just a few turns potentially. Not really that interesting, but this is more than I usually talk about Bruno, even though I still have the Hiker Anthony Sprite up here. Uh, this one's done, it doesn't really matter. But now I have to slow it down, take away the battle music, because this is where I'm gonna use 10 of my 11 candies. I don't really have any direct answers to Agatha, and even at the ripe level of 68, this one feels like a coin toss at best. On the first attempt, it starts off pretty normal. I hit a fire blast, I get the burn. That's pretty much the best start you could hope for, but things go south when I hurt myself in confusion, I get put to sleep, and a dream eater puts me face down in the dirt for another reset. And I would say in general, there's just not much to say about this fight. There's not much commentary to have. You basically just hope you don't see hypnosis or you hope that it misses, and you just slowly trudge through the battle, use fire blast on the high special ghost, use thunderbolt everywhere else, and it's just kind of lucky that hypnosis isn't the most accurate move in the world. I avoid it, and on my second attempt, coughing can see the light at the end of the tunnel. There's not gonna be a whole lot to say about Lance, as you could probably guess. Mono poison typing is just really good here. Especially if you have Thunderbolt, you can just take out the Gyarados. The three dragons will just spam non-damaging psychic moves, and Aerodactyl's all that's left that will even do damage, but like I said several times in the video, we have high defense. It's never gonna be able to solo me, and what all of that adds up to is that this is just a free fight. So I'm gonna win easy, but after the battle, I'm gonna use my final candy, and now, my friends, it's time for the final battle, and what I feel like is the toughest challenge in the entire game. I also learned Rest over Mimic here. 
but there's some really close margins for this fight and immediately something goes wrong. I don't outspeed the Pidgeot and it does the worst thing that it can do, charge up a sky attack. This means I still get by, but it does a significant chunk of damage. And now when that Alakazam comes in, I'm gonna have to do a quick freeze frame. Now, given that all things are even, neutral situation, this is what the numbers look like. At level 70, I can survive a Psychic or a Psybeam if they don't crit, and Sludge has a 28% chance to one shot. Now, obviously, coughing is never gonna outspeed, but it's not uncommon to see something like a turn one Psybeam. I survive, I either one shot it or it hangs on, then it uses something like Recover or Reflect, and then I knock it out on the next turn. That's what happens a lot. It's a pretty calculated battle, and I felt really comfortable with these ranges here, but I sort of just failed to factor in one thing. I didn't expect Pidgeot to go crazy with the sky attacks, and that little bit of damage that I took earlier means that I can still barely tank a side beam, but not a psychic, and of course, that's what it uses. I go down. On the next attempt, Pidgeot cooperates, and you can see just how little damage a wing attack does. It does like a third of what sky attack does so i should be in a good position to roll the dice on alakazam but a turn one reflect and some really bad luck on two low rolls of damage means that i'm going to go down again and it just does not seem this this isn't coughing's day it seems like on attempt number three pidgeot runs it back with another sky attack and look what happens here on the alakazam this makes me mad it not only gets the side beam but it gets the 10 percent confusion prop and I also fail the 50-50 chance to hit myself and just to rub it in when I'm really low, it crits psychic. I'm only at three health here. This would kill like 43 coughings, but I'm no stranger to getting crit by Alakazam. All we can do is press on. Now finally, coughings moving, grooving. We're kind of feeling it here. I get that sweet 6.8% chance to crit. We get the one shot on Pidgeot. Alakazam goes for a psychic, but like we've already seen, I can tank it. Not very well, but I am alive. That means I can let the sludge loose. And finally, I hit the range. We can move on. But notice here, my special got dropped. A little parting gift from Alakazam. Now this does make things a little bit more worrisome. But remember, I got rest now. And the original plan here is to bait out four debuffs from either a Leer or a Tail Whip on the ride on. But here, I'm going to make the decision to bait out six instead of four just to try to make up for that special drop. It takes like an hour, but eventually I do get it. And that means I can take down the Arcanine just fine, but I make another mistake here. Remember, my special is dropped. It's not even good in the first place, but compared to my attack, which is at 375 with seven badge boost, it means I should go for sludge on the executor, but I go for fire blast and it's not going to be enough to one shot it and it's going to open me up for a hypnosis. Now it's going to miss. That's great. But I feel really bad that I denied us the opportunity of seeing coughing easily one shot the executor with sludge. I feel bad about it. Even Pokemon like Mewtwo, Dialga, Palkia, they couldn't one shot executor. It is what it is. That's pretty much the battle over. The ending is just a formality. I got Thunderbolt for the Blastoise anyway. And that's going to end the run. Coughing finishes the game with a 4 hour, 38 minute, and 25 second time. And while I did really enjoy the routing process after you get Sludge and Thunderbolt, the beginning section was just, it was really bad. Guys, just boot up Pokemon Red, pick Coughing as a starter, and tell me how you like the Brock split. Or tell me if you figure out something that I just couldn't see. Because I can't see another Pokemon having a worse Brock split than this outside of like Abra. But we can at least finally see where Coughing ends up on the tier list. Now you already know that we're going to have to scroll a while and to no one's surprise coughing is going to end up on the very last page here but i'll go ahead and start talking about it because we need to get these tier lists scrolling on the screen it's going to take a while to get there but we'll eventually get there it's going to end up in 60 second place i don't have ev on here just yet and to be honest with you guys i don't even know if i did the ev stream i probably did so it's likely going to be 63rd overall it's just below psyduck and that feels perfect because those two feel like very similar Pokemon and with a final rating of 48.46 it's not great but it's also way better than the five Pokemon that rank in the 30s or better. I tried my best to get this one to at least a 50 or so I got pretty close but that Brock split and that first part of the game with only tackle and smog it's just so unfun that I just cannot possibly force myself to do more runs with coughing but there is one huge positive in this. It actually makes me pretty excited for that eventual wheezing run it's just like coughing with way better stats, double better in some situations, or at least close to it. It starts off with sludge, and I just think in general it could potentially cut close to two 
hours off of this time, but I'm not thinking about wheezing right now. I probably won't even do it during these final two months, maybe sometime early next year. Now, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you made it this far, you're a real one. I appreciate it a lot. And I'm just honestly really glad to be done with this run. If I sound a little nasally or congested, it's because I am, but I had to finally get this video done. Special shout out to my channel members and Patreons. I really appreciate the support. It really does mean a lot to me, guys. We're just a small channel out here. We're making pennies on the dollar, doing what we can, just doing runs for the fun of it. So I need to get started on Garatina. I have a very, very slight fall break from school, and I think I can pump that one out pretty quick. So I'm going to get started on that. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.